Hello and welcome to our first set of clips to do with, with snakes. Now in the current climate um, we're trying to keep our, our business going and to try and keep you guys interacting with us and to try and give you something to fill the days that ultimately you guys are potentially going to find boring. Now throughout the next few weeks we're going to talk about the different animals that we have uh, and give you something to interact with. We'll be posting on our Facebook page um, asking for questions. Unfortunately there's not many come in this week um, but we'll go through the information that we've got about the snakes that we hold. Now at pet parties we obviously cover the East Midlands doing parties and the first animals that we introduce are our snakes and the one that we've got here now is Monty. He's a seven year old bull python and um, they're also called royal pythons. Now the reason that they're called royal pythons goes back to when Cleopatra was around one of the ancient Egyptian um, sort of princesses, pharaohs, and she used to use these as jewellery. Um, so they're quite small snakes. Um, they can grow up to six feet in length. Um, they're quite docile, obviously they don't mind being handled, which is why we use them in our parties. Now Monty, um, Monty the python, is is um, is seven years of age. He's male, and as you can see, he quite enjoys being handled. But he does get quite wiggly the warmer he gets. Now you can see on his face here, he's got his pits, and these pits here are known to be quite a lazy snake. So when he's in his enclosure and it's feeding time, he will. He will literally just sit there and wait for the food to be dangled in front of his face. Um, and it's these pits that allow him in the wild um, and to some degree in captivity to identify where his prey is. His eyesight's not brilliant, um, so he really does rely on these pits. Um, so when we feed him, um, he he senses where that prey is and then ultimately um, strikes on his prey. Now in the UK it is illegal to live feed. The only person that can tell you um, that you can live feed is the vet. Um, so if we were to put a live rat in with Monty, um, I think the rat would probably do more damage to Monty than he would to the rat um, because he thinks his food is dead. Um, and warmed up through through lukewarm water. Um, now we know that Monty's a male because he's got spurs and we'll attempt to show you this. So his spurs sit at the base of his tail, they're these bits just here um, and they allow him to grasp um, the female. Now his reproductive organs lie inside him um, and at the point where they're needed they will sort of um, come out of his body to do what's necessary. Um, and it's these spurs that are on his tail that um, will help with the reproductive process. Now, Monty in the wild um, comes from grasslands in western and central Africa. Um, also live in shrubland. Now, um, he will lie in wait for his prey to come across him. He won't actively hunt, um, not unless necessary, because they, they believe that um, actively haunting waste the energy that they can serve. Being cold blooded they take their heat from the sun so they will lie and bask um, at the hottest point of the day um, to, to make the energy that they need to warm their blood up um, and then they'll go off hunting. Um, as I say they'll lie and wait for their prey to come towards them they'll use those pits to detect their prey. Um, in captivity, as I say, um, Monty will only eat um, dead rodents, so we feed Monty, or we try to feed him once a week. As with all reptiles, they do have a brain, and they decide if or not they want to eat. Um, so, sometimes we have to persevere, um, and then other weeks he'll eat quite, um, quite normally. Um, so he eats once a week, he eats rats, um, and these guys... Um, come from specialist breeders, so these rats um, are killed for um, for prey. Um, they're not wild caught, um, so they, they they come packaged. They're frozen, and as I say, Monty would only know the frozen mice as his prey. 
Um, we do have two other snakes and I will be showing you those in shortly. Um, I'll show you Messina. Messina is a corn snake and I'll get her out in a second. Um, but this one is Monty and he regularly comes to our parties. Okay, so we've covered Monty, and now the next snake that we've got is Messina. Now you can see that she's considerably longer than Monty, and these grow again up to six foot. Um, but she's obviously overtaken Monty in growth. She's a couple of years older than Monty at nine years old, um, and she originates from North America. Um, now, whilst doing a bit of research for these clips, um, I obviously needed to know where corn snakes um, originate from and Melissa says that they live in cornfields um, as the name suggests. Now I laughed at that and did a little bit of research myself and she was in fact correct. Corn snakes live in fields. Um, they're rat snakes so they, um, they hunt rats. Um, now during uh, the hunting process these guys are very different to Monty. They're quite active in the way that they hunt. They will actively seek out their prey um, and then strike. Now, Monty will constrict his prey. So they will bite and they will curl up around their prey really tight. Um, and as the, as the prey breathes, they will uh, constrict and get tighter and tighter until the, the prey is dead. Messina, on the other hand, has quite a powerful bite for her size. Um, she also has something called an anticoagulant, and I'm trying to hold her still so you can see her head. So quite a small head, but she can eat the same size prey as Monty. And so again, she eats rats um, in the wild and in captivity. She will bite her prey and she will administer an anticoagulant. Now, anticoagulant um, stops your blood forming um, scabs, which means that you slowly, um, you, you slowly bleed. Now, this will help Messina in killing her prey. So she's got ever slightly hollow teeth, and through those teeth, she'll administer this anticoagulant um, to help, um, help kill her prey. Now, Oliver from Burton has asked a question, how long do these live for? Now, there is a record on the internet to say that um, they can live up to about 23 years, but the oldest recorded corn snake is 32 years and three months. So thanks, Oliver, for your question, um, and I hope that helps. Now, he's also asked another question of how they bite so hard. One of the reasons snakes bites are so hard is because that is the only means of, of sort of stunning and killing and stopping their prey. So the reason they've got such a hard bite is because they've not got fists and feet to fight with. They have only got teeth and that's why it's got to be so hard. Now, you can see from um, Messina's pattern that she's quite pretty in the way she looks and this helps with blending in with those corn fields so in the in the fields she'd be nicely blended in now one of the things that really fascinate me about snakes is they're agrophobic now agrophobic means that they're scared of, of big spaces so if we put Monty, uh, sorry if we put Messina down on the floor she will automatically come towards us or come towards or go towards a corner now, she becomes quite scared when she's on her own, um, which is why she comes towards people. Now, at parties, some children can become a little bit fearful of this and think that she's on the hunt. Now, the only thing that she's on the hunt for is your warmth and to be close to you, because, as I say, she's agoraphobic. Now, if we were to leave her um, and let her go off and wonder, she would find a space and she'd curl up and she'd become quite tight. Now, in this fearful state, she forgets that she's a pet um, and she sort of reverts back to being a little bit wild. And now, as we've answered Oliver's question, the only way of protecting herself is with her teeth. So what they can do is when they become scared, they bite. 
Now, Messina is not a nasty snake. She hasn't got a nasty bite in her. But if she became scared, she would. So you can see here, she quite enjoys having her, her chin tickled. So she's stopped because she's quite enjoying that. But if we left her to roam around here on her own, she would become quite scared. And what we use is our pokey stick. It's called a snake hook. And we basically, when she's on the floor, we would rub it over her using the wooden handle. We'd rub it over so that we can just check that she's okay to be handled. Now, if she bites, she's not obviously happy, but she's going to bite the pokey stick as opposed to our arms or fingers, which will hurt considerably less. Okay, so over the next few weeks, um, what we're going to do is talk about our different animals. Um, and some of the things that we're going to cover is generic stuff. Now, one of the ways that we have to, or one of the things we have to abide by, is a license called a Performing Animals Licence. And one of the things that we have to do is record data. And one of the pieces of data that helps us look after our animals is the weight. And with snakes, it helps us with our feeding. So what we have to do is weigh them, and then we can look at how heavy they are um, and depending on the snake's weight, and on the size of the food that they eat. And the guidelines with snakes is, whatever their weight is, they will eat 10% of that weight in food. So let's say Monty's 800 grams. Um, so Monty of the snake's 800 grams, he will need to eat 80 grams of, um, of rat. And the rats come in specific different weights. Now... Over the next few weeks, as I say, we're going to cover different animals and what we really would like you guys to do is on the bottom of these videos or in the messages on our Facebook page or via email on um, petpartiesltd at outlook.com send us your questions about all of our different animals and some of the animals that we've got, we've got tortoises, we've got a horse field, we've got two horse fields, we've got hermans, we've got two crested geckos, We've got a Bosque Monitor Lizard, we've got a Blue Tom Skink, um, who else have we got? We've got Gobi, um, who's a bearded dragon, and then we've got three new Berber Skinks, which when it's their turn, we're actually going to have a bit of a competition and try and name, um, name the three of them. The last one that we may or may not bring out are the Inverts. So we've got an arachnid um, called Roxy, and she is a tarantula, and we will definitely be moving out the Halloween cockroaches. So, over the next few weeks, we urge you to write in, send in your pictures. Now, if you are watching from a school, or you are isolating down and you have some time on your hands, what we would like you to do is produce some posters or some leaflets or something about the information that we're producing. So if you are interested in doing that, produce a leaflet or a poster on some of the things that we talked about with these snakes. And if you get an adult to send us a picture, we can post these on our Facebook. We can print them off and we can start decorating our reptile room with them. As I say, if you've got any questions or queries on how we're going forward, any inquiries on parties, please don't hold them. Send them in to us and we can have a look and see where we're at as soon as Mr Johnson lets us know what we can do. Um, so messages are still open on our pet party page. Emails are still being checked regularly. Um, and if it really is desperate, there is a phone number as well that you can phone. Um, but primarily keep it on Facebook for us. Um, and until next time, we'll speak to you soon. Bye.